Salaki. Uh, my recorder stopped, but uh, I'm gonna start right here. It's 16, chapter 16, dealing with Sarah or Sarai and Hagar. All right. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bear him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Yahweh, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing, showing that there's proof that the Most High is the one that uh, bring forth children, you know, when a man and a woman lay down and have sex, the man puts the seed in the woman, and the Lord sit there, he makes the decision if the woman has a kid or not. I pray thee go in unto my handmaid, and may be that I may obtain children by her. And, er and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and Sarah, uh, Sarai, Abram's wife took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom, and she, I mean, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. So Yahweh judge between me and her. All right. And uh, let's see. Uh, so this is going to go into talking about how Hagar flees from Sarai. From her, uh, from her, you know, and, uh, uh, let's see. So this is just going into talking about how the Lord, uh, he heard, he, you know, he seen Hagar in the wilderness. So the Lord sent her an angel telling her to go back to her handmaid and submit. I mean, go back to her mistress and submit herself. It says that in the scripture. And uh, I just want to get to the point about uh, Abraham and whose son is going to receive the blessing. So I'm going to jump to 17. So we read that Sarah was unable to have children. So she gave her handmaid to her husband, Abram, all right, so that she can bear seed. But when she seen that Hagar had conceived, she was despised. Uh, and then it's going to go on to say that uh, up here in this verse, verse uh, chapter 16, verse 5, that when her, her servant has seen that she can bear and that her, her master couldn't, which is Sarah couldn't, it's like she was like, yeah, you know, I, I'm able to get pregnant. You not. You know, all right, so I'm going to start up here uh, in chapter 17, Genesis 17. I'm going to read the two and down. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thy, uh, multiply thee exceedingly. So he's talking to Abram, all right, before his name got changed to Abraham. Abraham, which means exalted father, all right. And Abraham, uh, Abram fell on his face. And the most I talk with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. All right. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding, uh, exceeding fruitful, you know, uh, have sex. That's what it's saying. You know, that's how. You produce more children, more offspring is through sex, all right? I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will, this is a, a key uh, scripture right here. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. It doesn't say seeds, because Abraham had more than one or two sons, all right? So it didn't say seeds. So 
the Most High chose one seed out of Abraham's seeds, his other sons. All right. Uh, and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God, a power unto thee and unto thy seed. Singular. It don't say seeds after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan, Israel, Yashallah. All right, which, that name will come and it will be given to Jacob. Yaqua, which means supplanter. His name will be changed to Yashallah, which is Israel. He is a prince of the power. How is he a prince of the power? Is because of this. Abraham. All right, he, the Most High spoke with Abraham and said, I will make it, uh, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. Not seeds, so it's seed. It's one seed from Abraham that will be chosen, and uh, the Most High will make an everlasting covenant to be a God, to be a power unto who? Abraham, and to thy seed after thee, which is Jacob, Isaac and Jacob. All right? And uh, I'm going to read on. Okay, I'm. Uh, it's going to go in to say, I'm going to read it. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. All right. And this is going to talk about uh, how you're supposed to circumcise uh, the newborn baby on the eighth day because he doesn't bleed as much. You know, if his skin is is more. It's more tough, it's better. You know, you're supposed to circumcise your child on the eighth day. All Hebrew Israelites, so-called blacks, Latinos, uh, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, we're supposed to do this. But in today's terms, we can't, all right, because we're under slavery, we're under oppression, and the doctors do it as soon as it's the, uh, the, the, the baby boy comes out. All right, so I'm going to skip and go to another uh, scripture. Now... Well, not another scripture, but yeah, another verse. I'm in uh, Genesis 17. Okay. Now, I'm going to read 15 on down. Then I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go to chapter 21. Because it's, it's, it's other precepts. All right. And the most I said unto Abraham, as for Sarah, thy wife. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. All right. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. Now, he didn't say this about Hagar. He didn't say that he was going to bless Hagar. All right. And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. All right. It don't say kings of peoples. Kings of people. Kings of people. It's simple. Uh, singular. <laughs> uh, then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, in his mind, shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And Sarah, uh, uh, slack it, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham, now he's going to consider Ishmael to the Most High. And Abraham said unto the Most High, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And this is what the Most High said. And the Most High said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Like, as a matter of fact. All right. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant. That's the same thing he said. On up. In the verses in chapter 17, Genesis 17, all right, where he said that he's going to be a God unto Abraham and uh, to thy seed. All right, so this is the seed line that's chosen, not Ishmael. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him, the seed after Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And as for Ishmael, this is what he said. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Like, yes, yeah, for Ishmael, I heard you. Behold, I have blessed him 
and will make him fruitful, meaning he's going to multiply it. Ishmael's going to, you know, have a lot of sex, going to multiply and be a great nation. And will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be begat, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, with which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and the most I went up from Abraham. That's it. Now, this is where it gets real good. Chapter 21, Genesis 21. I'm going to read up to the 13th verse. All right. So, and I'm going to do the, I'm going to do this quick. And the Yahweh visit Sarah, as he had said, and the Yahweh did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son. So like it, but Abraham a son, his old age at the set time of which the Most High had spoken to him, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him Isaac. All right, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as the Most High had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, the Most High had made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. So, uh, going back, I think it's in uh, Genesis, what's it, the 16th, I think it might be the 16th chapter or 17th chapter, that uh, Sarah was listening to when the angels that came down as men were speaking to uh, Abraham, and she heard that she would be 90 years old. And would have children, so she laughed, you know. And the angels knew that she had laughed, you know. And so that's what that was. That's what that is about. That's what it's talking about right here. All right. She said, "Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age, and the child grew, and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day." That Isaac was weaned. Now, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. So the son of Hagar, which was the slave woman to Sarah, her son was mocking uh, uh, Isaac. Ishmael was mocking Isaac. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman. And her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir, shall not be heir with my son, even <laughs> with Isaac. So the word heir that means uh to be joined, to uh have uh basically to inherit that blessing that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. So that's it. They're not going to inherit the blessing. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman. And all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. So listen to her when she said, Wherefore cast Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. All right? So that's it. And all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall, shall thy seed be called, chosen. I will be a God unto you, unto thee, and unto thy seed. That's it. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bought of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. So that's it. That's it. All right. Then, of course, uh, 
on through time. Uh, let me get it. So like it. Just, just hold on. I'm going to read this real quick. This is Genesis 22, uh, 15 through 17. All right. It says, And the angel of the Yahweh called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, said the Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, to my Isaac, that in blessing I will bless thee. And multiply, and, uh, it's like, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the sea shore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. So that's us. We are going to possess the gates of our enemies. All right, the ones that put us in slavery. It is a such thing as uh, a recompense. You know, it's going to be, uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but uh, damn, repercussion, not, it's something like, yeah, repercussions, you know, payback, all right? Like how it says in Revelation, uh, was it the 13th chapter? He that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword, all right? Like I says in Isaiah, the, uh, what Isaiah, uh, was it, is it the first chapter? All right, talking about the sons of Jacob are going to uh, possess uh, the lands of their captives. I believe, I'm going to get that, all right? But, uh, but yeah, but first, because I jumped to one subject to another, you know, uh, Basically, you know, when Isaac gets older, he's going to go uh, and find a woman. All right. But that's it. I'm, you know, that's it right there. You know. Uh, so the only chosen seed line from Abraham was Isaac and Jacob on through there and, and down to the 12 tribes, which went into slavery. Uh, they came over here to the Americas. By the ways of cargo slave ships and by um, uh, their own ship that they had, meaning uh, at the Apocrypha, it speaks about how the, the ten tribes left the uh, the Assyrian captivity and came over here to a land which no man dwelt or known, well dwelt to worship their God, their power, which is the same power who said that uh, who said to Abraham. That I'm going to be your God or I'm going to be a God to thee and thy seed. That's us. All right. And the 12 tribe, I mean, the 10 tribes that came over here were the Native Americans, so-called Seminole Indians, uh, the Aztec Indians, the Mayans, the Inca Indians down in South America. All right. Those are our people. Those are the 10 tribes. All right. The rest of the uh, southern kingdom were uh, they were in Jerusalem still at those times. All right, we were still in the Middle East, but the Northern Kingdom they came over here, all right, to get out of the captivity and to worship uh, Yahweh, all right. And going back from what I just read, Genesis uh, twenty two seventeen, you know how it says at the bottom, it's like it, how it says at the bottom, uh, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Let me go to uh, Isaiah, go to Isaiah, the first chapter. Is it the first chapter or is it the, Salaki, is it, what's, what's it, what, Isaiah, the, it's not the first chapter, it's, uh, damn, I had it, I know it was in Isaiah, what was it, the 14th, that's what, yeah, yeah. It's like it. So Isaiah 14, it says, For the Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers 
shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The, stang- the strangers are Israelites, Israelite foreigners, all right? They're going to like other nations, but their seed line goes back to Israel, all right? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Who is our oppressors? Who are the slaves in America? Who are the slaves, you know, uh, in Mexico? Who was who was slaughtered? Who uh, died of, of, of plagues that uh, the Spaniards brought over here? Even before then, who did the Persians have in slavery? The Jews. Okay? Not the fake Jews that's in the land of Israel now. They call themselves Israelis. Look. To be called an Israelite, to be known as an Israelite, to be from that sea line is, is one of the greatest things in the world. All right. Because for one, the actual true living power and his son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, to know that they're a black man with woolly hair and dark skin is great to know that King David looked like that. Solomon. All the prophets, all right, all the people of the land are were beautiful. That's what I'm saying. Rich, all right. Our laws are the greatest laws that's ever been written or followed. These laws in the scriptures are the only righteous laws in the whole world. To be known, to be a part of that is phenomenal, is great. Now you simply call yourself Israeli Jewish. Dude, that's it's like it is blasphemy. You know, I know the blasphemy of them which call themselves Jews. That's blasphemy, dude. Y'all make it weak, you know. So that's it. You Ishmaelites are not gonna receive the, the kingdom unless you're an Israelite, unless you unless you're a, uh one of your forefathers go back to the nation of Israel. That's it. You Moabites, you you Chinese, you Ammonites, you Japanese. You uh, uh Japhetic, the the sons of Japheth, you Hawaiians, uh you people in uh the Philippines, Malaysia, and so forth, y'all not gonna receive the inheritance or the uh the blessing unless you're an Israelite. Unless your line goes back to a so called black, Latino, Native American, Hispanic, Seminole Indian. That's it. So I'm gonna close this out, say all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the Fox and Elsa Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, a nation of Israel.